I just I'm bored. I just I'm bored. What plaything can you offer me today? What plaything can you offer me? What plaything can you offer me? <laughs> It's here. But what exactly is it? I have to turn the box around to find out because the label is partly covered over. Ah, there we go. Genmitsu 3020 Pro Max CNC Router Kit. Some assembly required. You'll have to excuse the shaking, folks. It is not Parkinson's, trust me. Equally annoying, though. Careful with that knife, bub. It actually has a paper manual. Wow. Ooh, shiny stuff. Nope, that won't come out. That will. The spindle motor. And some shipping protection. This thing is well protected in shipping. It would have to be really pounded before it would uh, before it would break. hardware. Still more hardware. And Allen wrenches. A box in a shiny bag. And something in a white box. I'll get to this later. It has a memory card. Zap straps or zip ties, depending on what you want to call them. USB cable and cable loom. Brush for brushing particles off of the bed. A USB stick with software and demo files. Or wires. It comes with V bits for engraving. It's a good start.
first layer of foam coming out. And we get to see why that silver thing wouldn't come out through that tiny hole. That's the gantry for the CNC machine. And that's the power supply I'm grabbing right now. This thing is heavy. Unlike previous incarnations of Genmitsu Sane Smarts CNC machines, this one is made primarily out of aluminum. Or if you're English, aluminium. Nice heavy base, doesn't take up an awful lot of space, and it is capable of working an item roughly the dimensions of a sheet of paper, but a little bit deeper, of course. This is pretty much the usual Saint Smart Genditsu 3020 Pro Max that you've seen in other assembly videos and review videos on the YouTubes, etc. So I'm not really going to go into too much detail about it, though I will produce a review video of it at some point in time, but I want to make note of one major difference between this and the other videos. You can see that this is pretty much the same. It's got the eight holes for mounting there and on the other side of the gantry as well. The big difference comes in right here. They must have made a slight revision change to how this whole thing assembled. Because instead of having to slide spring-loaded T-nuts into these tracks here, they've drilled and threaded holes right into the extrusion so that you don't get those T-nuts to lose or to struggle with to put in here. I guess there must have been some complaints about it, or they figured maybe, hey, this will be more rigid. I don't know. But there you have it. No more T-nuts to fuss with. No spacing out of the T-nuts to fight with. That's a good thing. Let's start building. Looking good so far, and yes, this man actually reads the manual. I know that's a violation of the dude code, but hey, I like it to go together properly right the first time. Properly right? Ah, uh, oh well. Bad grammar. Gotta tighten them down. Don't want the gantry shifting when we're doing work. Or playing, as the case may be. Sorry for my back, folks. I don't know why, but the top motor mounting screw was not in its position, and apparently other people have noted this as well. Maybe there's a reason for it not being installed when you get it.
Installing limit switches comes with one Y limit switch, one X limit switch, and two Z limit switches, top and bottom. The bottom one is optional. The top one is not. The controller. This is the one remaining item in the kit which actually requires those goofy T-nuts. But since you can't slide them in from the end, you've got to put them in on their side. And then what I did was I put the bolts in, didn't tighten them down, and I took a tiny screwdriver and then just flipped them up so that they were vertical and then tightened them down. One of the things that you do not want to do when you tighten the bolts down that might mount the uh, controller, which is a Arduino-based gribble controller, by the way, or gerbil if you prefer, is you don't want to tighten them down hard because if you do, you could crack the plastic mounting for the controller and you don't want to do that. Putting the spindle in place. Most of what's coming next is simply connecting up all the wires. Thankfully, they've put together the patches with the plugs already so you don't have to go through the pain of crimping connectors so on the ends of the provide. leads. There's an optional Z limit switch, so I'm going to put that in. That's for the bottom Z. Looks like a mess, but it'll be better later. And this is cleaning up the cables, otherwise known as cable management. And they provide this stuff that looks like the plastic binding for books, except that it's coiled up like a spring, and so you have to kind of work at putting it on. Easiest way is simply to wrap it like tape. And as you do, you can pop the wires into it with each rotation of the, the lead around just like tape. I'm debating switching this machine away from Gribble or Gerbil or however you want to pronounce it with the Arduino controller and switching over to Linux CNC, which would mean replacing the controller board. We'll see. Maybe I'll stick with this since I've got Linux software working with it. Well, this fellow I used to work for once upon a time used to say, plug in and watch for smoke. Here we go. Dead lights. And all the lights come on. I'm assuming it is booting. Well, that looks good to me. So the next step is a test. And I think I'm going to plug in the controller. What I would call a jog switch. 
I guess I'd better call this what uh, the book calls it, or somebody's going to make a quote. It's not called a jog switch, it's called an offline controller. Well, that's what it is, an offline controller. But let's see if it works. Uh-oh. Not doing anything. Hang on a second. Because I'm a dunce. There we go. Aha! Ooh, look at that. Good. What about starting this spindle? Offhand, I would say we have a successful test here. Now the big thing is to hook it up to a computer and see what happens. Okay, the CNC machine is connected to the computer. I've got my camera connected directly to the computer now. And I'm running the CNC controller software, or at least the version I'm using, is Universal Decode Platform, version 2.0.12. And it's for Linux, this version, as I'm a Linux nerd. Not that I have anything against Windows or Mac, but... I have set a zero point on it. I know the jog controls work. And so let's see what happens if we send the spindle to zero. I'd call that a successful test. Now all I need to do is chop something up with it or whatever, but I'm not going to do that now as that would require me to start it up and I'm certain that the neighbors would not appreciate a screaming CNC machine anywhere near them chopping through wood or metal or plastic or anything like that. Just one more thing to take a look at and then we'll call this video good. Ooh, uh, another Amazon package. What could be in it? Since the machine only came with V-bits, and I want to do a little bit more than just engrave with it, bunch of machine bits. They're, multi, they're good cutters and drill bits and, and so on. So yeah, I'm going to have fun cutting pieces up with it. I'll do a proper review of what I think of the machine, what I think of the bits later. Ciao, Mata.